Hello, it's Jim from JetsonHacks.com, where we are all about developing for the NVIDIA Jetson Developer Kits. On today's show, I'm going to show you how to set up your Jetson Nano to run from a USB drive. In an earlier show, we set up our Jetson Nano to run from a USB drive. In order to do that, we used a process called Pivot the Root. Basically, what this does is put the root FS on the USB drive. Root FS is basically where we keep all of the files on the system. An issue that you have with the Jetson Nano is that there is no USB driver to talk to the USB drives when the system is loading at boot time. In a previous episode, we modified the Linux kernel to build in the USB drivers. Recompiling the kernel to include the USB drivers takes about 45 minutes. One of our viewers notices and says, hey, there's a better way to do this. Instead of building the USB drivers into the Linux kernel, you can add the USB drivers to initRAMFS. initRAMFS is the initial RAM file system that the bootloaders use to load the Linux kernel. That way, the USB firmware is available to the bootloaders so that they can see the USB drives. The advantage of doing it this way is that it only takes a couple of minutes to build initRAMFS. That way, we save 45 minutes of build time. A special shout out to viewer George for showing us the light. Make sure that your USB drive is plugged into the Jetson and let's get started. Okay, so let's open up a terminal. Right click on the desktop, open terminal. On the Jetson Hex Nano account on GitHub, there is a repository named root on USB. Let's clone that repository. Git clone. And now we will use the CD command to change over to the root on USB directory. This is a four step process. In step one, we add USB support to init RAMFS. Init RAMFS is the minimal file system, which the bootloaders use to load the Linux kernel. So let's add USB to the init RAMFS. There's a convenience script to do that. Password. We get a couple of warnings, but that's okay. The second step is to set up our USB drive. In this example, we are using a Samsung portable SSD, 500 gigabytes. You know how we like our GBs. Let's open up the disks application. Here's our disk. Typically when the disks are new, they are not formatted. It's a good idea to have only one USB drive hooked up to your Jetson when you are setting this up initially. The first step is to format the disk. And we want to make this compatible with modern systems. Format. Are you sure? Yes, please. The next step is to set up a partition. We hit the plus button here. Create partition in unallocated space. Let's set our partition size to 490 or so. Leave it a little room at the end. Next. Volume name, Nano SSD 500. That sounds fast. And here's an important part. We want to set the internal disk for use with Linux systems. EXT4, create. And now you can see that we've created a partition on this volume named Nano SSD 500. It is device slash dev slash SDA1. Now we're ready for step three. We are going to copy over the application partition over to the USB drive. You want to make sure that your USB drive is larger than your SD card. We are going to use the path option. So let's do that. Our path 
and it was slash dev slash SDA1. You notice that it could not find it. It says unable to find the mount point of slash dev slash SDA1. So let's mount the USB drive. We can do that by just double clicking on here. Now the drive is mounted. And let's try it again. Up arrow on the keyboard brings up the last command. Okay, now everything's copied across. You can see all our new little friends are here on Nano SSD 500. Let's close this up and let's clear this off. And now we're on step four. We need to modify the ext linux.configuration file. Okay, let's open up another terminal. Let's switch over to the boot directory, change directory slash boot. This is a new file that we created, init-rd-xusb. This includes the USB driver. Let's switch over to the ext linux directory. Let's make a backup of our configuration file. We are in a system area, so we need to use super user. Super user do copy and we'll call it dot original now we edit the configuration file sudo with the text editor this configuration file tells the bootloaders how to configure the system when it boots up we need to tell the configuration file to use our new USB init ramfs and set the root file system to point to the USB drive. There are several ways to point the root at the USB drive. One is to send it to the device path. If you are only using one USB drive on your device, that works, but you may run into issues if you use more than one USB drive. When the USB system boots up, it enumerates the attached USB devices. However, you are not guaranteed that one particular device will always have the same device path between boots. For example, let's say you have a thumb drive plugged in with your USB drive. USB may assign a path of slash dev slash SDB to the boot drive. And then the bootloaders get lost when they try to pivot the root. Another way to set the root file system is to set the label to be the volume of the USB drive. If you remember back, we named our volume nano SSD 500. So we would build our statement root equals label equals nano SSD 500. This is a safer method than using your device path, unless you happen to name all your volumes the same. <laughs> And the third method is to set the root to point at the UUID of the USB drive. The UUID is the universal unique identifier. The number is assigned to the disk drive when it is formatted. This is the most technical way of pointing at the disk drive. There is a convenience script to look up the disk UUID. Basically, the script looks up the UUID of the USB drive and then constructs the command to point at the root there. Let's hop over to our script. Let's make a copy of our default boot sequence. We will rename it SD card. You should set the menu label here too. Now let's set our init RD to include our USB driver and set our boot arguments to point the root at the USB drive. Now let's save the file and close it up. Moment of truth, let's restart the system. Let's shut it down and replug the power. 
Ooh, this is a good sign. Let's log in. And here we are. You can see the SD card here. And let's take a look at our USB drive. See our home directory. Let's take a look at our properties. And you can see the free space is 446 GBs. Plenty of room for developing. If you have issues when you reboot your Jetson, you may need to use a serial console to help you debug. I'll leave a link in the description below to help you with that. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Smash that like button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.